ادع الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادلهم بالتي هي احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبع الهدى السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy and blessings upon all of you. And uh, we hope that all of you had a wonderful Eid, uh, Eid al-Adha. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of you your sacrifices and all of your good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of our brothers and sisters who are overseas making the Hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return them safely back to their families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them for their sins and allow them to come back to us the way that their mother gave birth to them, clean, free from any type of sins or shortcomings. So today, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about the different types of disbelief. The different types of disbelief in regards to Allah's names and Allah's attributes. Previously we talked about the different categories of Tawheed, the different categories of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talked about firstly the belief in the existence of Allah. Then we went on talking about belief in Allah's Lordship, Ar-Rububiyyah. Then we went on elaborating about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Uluhiyyah, right to be worshipped alone. And now we are currently discussing the Tawheed of Al-Asma wa Sifat, the Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful names and beautiful attributes. And in our previous lecture, we talked about briefly uh, a couple important points in how the Muslims should believe in Allah's names and attributes and how if we establish a characteristic for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we also negate its complete opposite. So inshallah, first we're going to talk about today about some of the different types of disbelief in Allah's names and attributes, and then we will move on to mention and discuss some important principles which the student of knowledge and which the Muslim who is seeking to learn and gain more knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through studying the science of Aqidah must know, inshallah. So there's different types of disbelief in Allah's names and attributes, unfortunately. The first type is disbelieving in Allah's verses. Alright? Disbelieving in Allah's verses in the Quran and also within the creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He puts ayat in the Quran, He puts ayat in the creation to prove his existence and to prove that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in the universe. So when one denies Allah's existence or denies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything or denies the proofs which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the creation, then this is the first and most uh, Severest type of disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes. Second type of disbelief in Allah's names and attributes is the type of disbelief which is related to naming. Naming Allah a name that He didn't name Himself. Or calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a name that doesn't benefit Allah. Or a name that might contain in it some disrespect or a name that is not befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as calling Allah the Father, or calling Allah the active reason of the creation, or the higher power, or the higher justification, or higher reason, or cause of everything. These names which one would ascribe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are... Uh, these fall into the category of disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes. And when we name Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we only name or call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the names 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called himself. And Allah he talks about calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his beautiful names. As Allah he says, Wallahi Asma ul Husna Fadu Hubiha Wadaru Ladina Yulhiduna fi Asma i Sayujizona Makanu Yamalun and all, all the most beautiful names belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah owns all of the most beautiful names and all of them belong to Allah. So call upon Allah, Allah with them. Call upon Allah using these beautiful names. And leave the company of those who belie or deny or utter impious speech against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names for indeed they will be requited for what they used to do. The next type of disbelief regarding Allah's names and attributes is disbelief by changing the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names or changing the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. And this is something that the people of the previous nations from amongst the Yahud and the Nasara, amongst the Jews and the Christians fell into. One exa- and also this is from the ways that the people of innovations change the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names or attributes. An example of that is, for example, they will come along to the verse Allah he mentions in the Quran, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Allah he says in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 164, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa directly. Allah he is the one who is speaking here. He spoke to Musa directly. So the people of innovation and those who have sicknesses in their hearts, they change the Dhamma on Lafd al-Jalala and they change it to a Fatha. And they would say, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهَ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا So they would change the meaning. This changes the meaning. This makes Musa the one who was speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they use this they use this to change the meaning of the Qur'an, number one. And secondly, to change the meaning related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they use this false interpretation and this changing to deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to speak. So this is a type, this is a type of disbelief. Or what the people of innovations do as well, they change the meaning of istiwa. Allah talks about him rising above over the throne in seven verses in the Quran. One of them is in Surah Al-A'raf where Allah says, Thumma stawa ala al-arsh. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after He created everything in the creation, then He rose above the throne in a manner that suits His majesty. So they change the meaning to mean istawla, istawla, meaning to take over. Astola, see how they added one letter into the word, they added one letter into the word, these people of innovations and those who changed the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mean that Allah took over or occupied or seized the throne or seized the creation from, from another being. So the people of innovations, okay, they call this, they call this ta'wil, they call this ta'wil but this ta'wil that they are doing, this is false and this is dispraised because it is changing the word from its original understanding to another understanding without evidence. And Allah, He talks about those who used to change the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Revelations in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 46. Allah, He says, مِنَ الَّذِينَ هَادُوا يُحَرِّفُونَ الْكَلِمَ عَمَّ وَاضِعِي وَيَقُولُونَ سَمِعْنَا وَأَصَيْنَا وَاسْمِعْ غَيْرَ مُسْمِعٍ وَرَاعِنَا لَيَّمْ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ وَطَعْنًا فِي الدِّينِ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا وَاسْمِعْ وَانْظُرْنَا لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَأَقَوَّمَا وَلَكِنْ لَعْنَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Among those are the Jews. There are some who used to displace or change the words from their rightful places in the Torah. And they say, we hear your word, O Muhammad, and we disobey. And hear, and let you, O Muhammad, hear nothing. And ra'ina, with a twist of their tongues, and as a mockery of the religion of Islam. And if they only had said, we hear and we obey, and make us understand, it would have been better for them and more proper, 
but Allah has cursed them for their disbelief, so they believe not except a few. The next type of disbelief regarding Allah's names and attributes, which some individuals fall into, is disabling the meanings. Disabling the meanings of, of the names. They'll establish the name itself, but they say it doesn't have a meaning. It doesn't have a meaning. They'll either completely deny it, deny the meaning, or partially deny the meaning. Okay? So it means leaving off and taking away the actions of the words. For example, Allah, He is al Samia. This is what they will say. This is what the people innovations will say. They will say, okay, we established that Allah, He is al Samia. Allah hears, right? That Allah is the all hearing. They'll say, Allah, He is al Samia. Allah, He is the all hearing, but He doesn't hear. Or Allah is Al-Basir. Allah is Al-Basir. Allah is the all-seeing, but He doesn't see. So, what they are really doing, they are really denying Allah's names and attributes completely or partly. They establish a name, but they don't establish the meaning. And this is also from the types of, of disbelief. This is also from the types of disbelief, where we have some of them, where they completely deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, Okay? Then we have others who partially deny Allah's names and attributes. Some of them, they deny Allah's attributes and affirm His names. Or deny some attributes and affirm other of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. So Allah, He talks about this type of disbelief in the Qur'an. In Surah Al-Ra'd, verse number 30, He says, كَذَلِكَ أَرْسَلْنَاكَ فِي أُمَّةٍ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهَا أُمَمٌ لِتَتْلُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ الَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَهُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ بِالرَّحْمَانِ قُلْ هُوَ رَبِّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ مَتَابِ Thus we have sent you, O Muhammad, to a community before whom other communities have passed away in order that you might recite unto them that what we have inspired to you while they disbelieve in Ar-Rahman, they disbelieve in Allah the Most Merciful. Say to them, he is my Lord, la ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped but He. In Him I put my trust, and to Him will be my return with repentance. And the next category of disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes is striking similarities and comparisons. Striking similarities and comparisons by affirming that there is something similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation, in His divine essence, or in His attributes, or in His names. Like, for example, there might be creatures from amongst the creation that have some of the names of some of the characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, such as mercy. Parents have mercy for their children. Animals have mercy for their young. Such as sight. Human beings have the ability to see. Hearing. Humans have the ability to hear. So do animals. But these attributes and these characteristics that these creatures possess are different than the attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses complete and perfect hearing, and complete and perfect sight and knowledge, but the creatures from amongst the creation, their hearing is deficient, their seeing is deficient, their knowledge is deficient. So this is what Allah mentions in the Qur'an when He says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That there is nothing like unto Allah, and Allah He is the all-hearer, the all-seeing. And Allah He also mentions in Surah Al-Ikhlas, وَرَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ and there is no one equal or comparable unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any aspect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness. So now brothers and sisters, after talking about the different types of disbelief and regarding Allah's names and attributes, we're going to talk about some important principles that we need to know and understand when we want to study and research and learn more about Allah's names and attributes. So the first principle that is important for us to understand 
is that the Muslims must affirm everything that Allah affirmed for Himself in the Qur'an or that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, affirmed for Allah because the Prophet doesn't speak from himself he only speaks from revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we must affirm everything that Allah his messenger affirmed for him for himself without tahrif without tahrif without distorting the wording or the meaning of the attributes or the names also without without ta'til without ta'til Meanings without denying them, without denying them or denying their meanings or disabling their meanings. Also without takyif, without asking and going into deep research into how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes are, without proofs from the Quran or Sunnah, also without tamthil without tamthil, making resemblances to any of Allah's attributes to the creation. The second principle is not only do we affirm for Allah everything Him and His Messenger affirmed for Allah, but we also deny for Allah everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has denied for Himself in His book or upon the tongue of His Messenger. Along with believing that the fully and perfect and complete opposite is affirmed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And I think we talked about this in our previous lecture that if we affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is, Allah sees, Allah has the ability to see. So we affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to see everything. And nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sight. So at the same time, we negate blindness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we negate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ignorance, we negate ignorance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means that we establish the complete opposite and the perfect opposite, which is knowledge, that Allah's knowledge is all expansive and He is all knowledgeable of all things. The next principle brothers and sisters, are the sifat of Allah, the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are tawqifiyya, are tawqifiyya. The attributes and characteristics of Allah can only be spoken about with a text, with a text from the Qur'an or with the sunnah. Okay, so nothing is affirmed or denied from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except what Allah denied from Himself or affirmed for Himself or what the Prophet Muhammad affirmed for Allah, or what the Prophet Muhammad denied for Allah. Next principle, to halt with regards to vague terms which are not found to be affirmed or denied textually in wording or meaning. So further explanation is sought. Then if something false is meant by it, then we declare Allah free of that and reject it. If, however, it is something that is true and something that is not to be denied for Allah, then it is accepted and the correct terminology as found in the Qur'an and Sunnah is to be made clear. One should call for the usage of the correct terminology always in place of this vague and newly introduced wording. For example, some people say, Al-Jah, for example, or Allah, He is the Sabab. Right? Allah, He is the Sabab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the Sabab. Or we would ask people, well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sabab? Okay? So we would ask for a further explanation. We wouldn't automatically affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sabab or deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sabab just because people might have right, an ulterior motive into us affirming or negating. So we would ask for explanation. Well, what do you mean by saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sabab? If you mean... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who cures the sick individuals. We would say, okay, yeah, you are right. You are right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who cures human beings and cures individuals and creatures. But we do not call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sabab. We call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? A shafi. A shafi. That Allah is the healer. Okay? Another example of that, for example, is jihad. Jihad direction. This is what some of the earlier people the earlier uh, groups of innovation used to say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has a jihad, Allah has a direction. 
So Ahlus Sunnah, we would halt. We would halt and we would stop for a minute. We would say, we would neither immediately affirm it or deny it. And we would ask the one who says, well, what do you mean by jihad? What do you mean by jihad for Allah? What do you mean by a position or direction or a place for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If he says that he means a place which contains Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we say that this is something false and rejected. And Allah is to be declared free from this. But if he says that it means Allah is unrestricted, the above, then we say that this is true. And it is not to be denied for Allah. So we accept the meaning from him, but we say that it is more befitting that it be said Allah is above the heavens, or that he is above. Since these wordings never occurred, right? the wordings of jihad never occurred in authentic texts, but we have istiwa, for example, that Allah is above, Allah is above the heavens, right? These wordings came specifically in authentic texts. But as for the term jihad, okay, then this is vague, and it is a novelty, and it is better off to leave these type of wordings when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next principle, brothers and sisters, is that every attribute that is established by an authentic report most definitely agrees with the sound and upright intellect. So, as human beings with deficient intellects, there are many things that we don't understand. And the only way that we would know and come to learn more about our Creator is through the Creator's speech, the way He talked about Himself. So, it's very important that our intellects proceed, proceed trying to understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah and do not precede the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Sixthly, brothers and sisters, the next principle, to cut off any hope in trying to encompass anything of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge. Next principle is the, the characteristics of Allah and attributes of Allah are affirmed specifically and in detail, whereas denial is done in general. Okay? The affirmation of Allah's characteristics are done specifically and in detail, and the denial is done in general. So an example of this, for example, is like affirming for Allah that He hears and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees. And for the rest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. And an example of generalized denial is like denying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any type of likeness. Saying, right, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ that there is nothing like unto him. Shay, there is nothing like unto him in the creation. Also, every name confirmed for Allah is inclusive of an attribute. Every name that we affirm for Allah, so if we affirm for Allah that Allah is Al-Aziz, Al-Aziz, then we affirm for a characteristic that Allah Yu'iz, Yu'izzu man yasha, wa yadhillu man yasha. If Allah is Ar-Rahman, then from his characteristics is what? Yarham. Allah Yarham al Khalq. Right? Allah bestows his mercy on the creation. If Allah's name is As Sami' the all hearing, then Allah Yasma. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears. So every name confirmed for Allah is inclusive of an attribute. But the opposite is not the case. Okay? Not every attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has means that that attribute or trait or characteristic is one of his names. Okay, is one of his names. For example, right, as we mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al latif Okay, al latif meaning Allah is the most gentle. Okay, the most gentle. So this incorporates the attribute of being gentle, being gentle and being kind and so on. However, as for his attributes such as irada, uh, irada, right? Irada or maji, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has free will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what He wills. And Allah's maji, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's istiwa, Allah's ascending. Then we wouldn't call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the comer or the willer, okay? That, because 
You see here, these are attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are not names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So names are not to be derived from them, such as the one who wills, or the comer, or the one who ascends. Next principle regarding Allah's names and attributes is that the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are perfect, and they do not contain any deficiencies at all. And also the attributes of Allah are thatiyah, Okay, the attributes of Allah are pertaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's self, Allah's being, as well as fi'liyah, okay, as well as those pertaining to actions. And there is no limit or no restriction or end to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions. Next principle, the proof from the book, from the Quran in the Sunnah for establishing an attribute is either by clearly stating it, or by its being incorporated by the name, or by a clear statement of an action or description proving it. Examples of this, for example, mercy, rahma, might, power, Allah's face, right? Allah's hands, Allah's fingers. Examples, for example, Al Basir, for example. Allah, He is the all seeing. So this incorporates the attribute of sight. As-sami' the all hearing. This incorporates the attribute of hearing. Okay? Also, right, the most merciful made, right? Astawa or Allah rose above the throne. So this proves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Ascended above the throne. Allah ascended above the throne. The next principle that when we want to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we may seek refuge with Allah, the most mighty, the most magnificent, using His attributes, and also swear an oath by them. Okay? So for example, somebody says, Wallahi, right? By Allah, somebody could say, Warrahman. Warrahman, right? I swear by the most merciful. Or, Wa as-sami, right? I swear by the one who hears everything. So, one may seek refuge in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, saying, right, "A'udhu billahi" or "A'udhu bil Rahman." Okay, we may seek refuge with Allah using His name, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, His attributes, and swear an oath by them as well. Next principle. is speech. Any type of speech concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes is like speech concerning the that. Okay? Any speech concerning Allah's attributes or characteristics is like speech concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's self. So just as Allah's self is real and does not resemble that of other than the creation, then likewise it is characterized by real attributes which also do not resemble the attributes of others. And just as affirmation of Allah's self and being is an affirmation of His existence, but not of how He exists, then the same is true for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes and characteristics. Okay? Another principle is that speech concerning some of Allah's attributes is like speech concerning the rest of them. So whoever affirms the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like hearing and seeing and will, then we must therefore affirm Allah's loving, Allah's being pleased, Allah's becoming angry, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dislike. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, whoever differentiates between one attribute and another, despite their being the same with regards to reasons for their being literal or metaphorical, then he is contradicting himself, erroneous in his position, and resembling those who, who believed in a part of the book while disbelieving in, part, in other parts. Next principle is whatever is attributed to Allah and is not, and is not something separate from Allah, then it is an attribute of Allah's and is not something created. And everything that is attributed to Allah, but is something separate from Allah, then it is something created, 
So not everything that is attributed to Allah is necessary an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the example of that, for example, Allah's hearing, right? Allah's seeing, Allah's being pleased in wrath. This is an example of an attribute that is attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is directly related to Him and is not considered to be separate from him. But, for example, the house of Allah, or the camel of Allah, the she-camel of Allah, these are things which are attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are separate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next principle is that the meaning, the meaning of Allah's attributes which are established in the Quran and Sunnah are known and are explained with the apparent and literal meaning. Never with their majaz, never with their metaphorical or figurative meaning. Okay? But as for the kayfiyah, how they are, then this is unknown. Then this is unknown. Okay? Anytime we want to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having a hand, then the first explanation of Allah having a hand is we establish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hand first. We establish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hand and both of His hands are right hands and both of His hands are according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majesty and magnificence. And then we also establish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power and can do whatever He wants to with His hands. But we don't say the meaning of the hand just means the metaphorical or figurative meaning, meaning power or strength without establishing first that the, the, the literal and apparent meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has an actual hand. Next principle is the attributes of Allah, the most mighty and majestic, and all other matters of aqidah, belief, are established by whatever is authentically established from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, even if it is an ahad narration, even if it is a single narration from one companion and that companion and that chain of narration is authentic. Next principle, brothers and sisters, whatever occurs in the Quran and Sunnah, then it is binding upon every believer to hold what it entails as his saying and to believe in it, even if he does not understand the meaning of it. Allah created us and Allah knows everything in the heavens and the earth and He knows far more than anything in anyone in the creation. Allah, He knows everything. But human beings, their knowledge is deficient. So like we mentioned previously, the only way we would come to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech. Also, no analogy is made regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. And also the attributes of Allah cannot be enumerated. The attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be enumerated since every name of Allah comprises an attribute. And Allah's names cannot be enumerated since from them are those which Allah has retained with Himself in the knowledge of the unseen. And this is contained in the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in which the hadith was narrated by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, where he says, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi makes supplication, and he says, right, uh, I am the, the son, O oh Allah, I am your slave, the son of your slave, the son of your female slave. My forelock is in your hands. Your judgment is continually being carried out upon me. Your decree upon me is just. I ask you with every name that is yours which you have named yourself or that you have na sent down in your book or taught to any of your creation or have kept within yourself in the hidden knowledge of the unseen amongst yourself. So we see from this hadith that there are some names and there are some attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the creation, revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa put in the Quran, but there are also other names and attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hid from the creation and Allah has those hidden within, within Himself. So, there are many 
books which I would recommend that the student of knowledge refers back to when they want to learn more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes. One of them is by Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti called Minhaj wa dirasat li ayat al-asma'i wa sifat um, Another one is Qawa'ad al-Muthla by Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salah al-Uthaymin rahimahumullah jami'an and he mentions in, in his book many important principles which the student of knowledge in which the Muslim who wants to further his understanding of aqidah should refer back to and should study so that he can learn more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful names and beautiful attributes. So Shaykh Muhammad Amin al-Shanqiti, rahimahullah, he said that the Qur'an indicates that the issue regarding Allah's names and attributes, or specifically Allah's divine attributes, is focused around three principles. And whoever follows all of these three principles has reached the correct understanding and attained the belief which the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and his companions and the righteous predecessors adhere to. And whoever misses out one of these three principles is misguided. He stated that each of these princi three principles is indicated in the Qur'an. The first principle, he says, the first one, write this down brothers and sisters, is declaring that Allah is far above any any individual, anything in the creation regarding Allah's attributes. Okay, in Allah's attributes, they, okay, we declare that Allah is far above any of His attributes resembling any of the attributes of His creatures. And this principle is indicated in many verses in the Qur'an. From amongst them, Allah he says in Surah Al-Shura, verse number 11, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like unto Him. Nothing in creation is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah's Lordship, in Allah's right to be worshipped, or in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes. Also, we mentioned previously, also in Surah Al-Ikhlas, the fourth verse in Surah Al-Ikhlas, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ And there is none co-equal or comparable unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any aspect of Allah's oneness. Also, Allah says in Surah Al-Nahab, verse number 74, فَلَا تَذْرِبُوا لِلَّهِ لِأَمْثَاءِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So do not put forward similitudes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not put forth similitudes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and you do not know. So that is the first principle. Okay, the first principle is that we never resemble anything in the creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not in His names and attributes, not in His right to be worshipped, nor in His, His Lordship. The second principle is believing in Allah as He described Himself. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be described by anyone who knows Allah better than Himself. Allah He says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 140, And say to the people, Do you know better? Or does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know better? And this principle includes believing in what the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has said describing Allah. Because no one knows Allah after Allah Himself better than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa As the Prophet, Allah, He talks about the Prophet in the Quran in Surah Al-Najm, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ That nor does the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa speak of his own desires. It is only revelation revealed that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa speaks. And the third principle, which uh, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti mentions, rahimahullah, he says, the one on which the issue of divine attributes centers is that there is no hope of understanding the true nature of how these attributes are because understanding their true nature is impossible. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He stated this clearly in Surah Al-Taha, verse number 110. ma ma khalfahum wa la bihi ilma. That Allah knows what happens to all of His creatures in this world and what will happen to them in the hereafter. But the creation and the creatures will never encompass anything of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge. So this means that it is impossible for the human mind to encompass the attributes of the Lord of the heavens and the earth 
without an explanation from Allah or from the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. So what the Shaykh said about here, about the possibility of ever knowing the true nature of Allah's attributes is sound logic. Because the human mind, no matter how intelligent it is and how great its powers of understanding are, is totally incapable of knowing the true nature of everything in existence and specifically and specially about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Creator. Man is incapable of knowing the true nature of the soul that resides in his body. He is incapable of knowing the true nature of light, which is the most apparent of things. He is incapable of understanding the true nature of matter, or of the atoms of which matter is composed. So how can we hope to understand the true nature of the divine essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His beautiful attributes? So, these were some principles that we mentioned. And now we're going to go on to discuss how Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah view striking similarities to Allah's names and attributes. And we'll bring a couple examples and then elaborate on them. First of all, let's take an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hearing. Okay, hearing. Hearing is one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful and magnificent attributes. But also, as we mentioned previously, it is an attribute which can be used for human beings, for animals, for insects, for fish. So, the attribute of hearing, it can be used for a young, healthy man. And the attribute of hearing is also found with an old man, an elderly man who has reached his last days. So the word here, hearing, is one. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears, and also creatures hear. But the meaning has different degrees and different levels. Just how there is no comparison between the hearing of a young man in his adolescence, at his prime, and the hearing of the elderly man who wears hearing aids, who can't hear more than 10, 20 feet away. So if it is permissible, okay, if we find that there are inequalities and differences and variations between two human beings who are from the same species, okay, who are created beings, then variations and inequalities between the Creator and the creation are foremost. So this is part of us implementing the verse that Allah mentions in the Qur'an, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and the creation hears. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing is not like that of the creation. If we can find and establish and recognize and realize that even amongst the creation, there are differences and variations between those characteristics, okay, between hearing. The young man doesn't hear like the old man, and they're from amongst the creation. So what about the Creator and the creation? There is far more greater levels and degrees and differences between them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing is perfect and complete, but the hearing of the creation and human beings is deficient and, and weak. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing is strong and perfect and complete, but the hearing of the creation is weak and deficient. Also power, okay? Power, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has complete and perfect power over everything in the universe. But also human beings, animals have power as well, okay? So this attribute can be used to express the strength of or power of an elephant and also the power of an ant. But between them is the similarity in the general meaning. Okay, that ant has power, ant is powerful amongst his, his, his species, and the elephant is powerful amongst his, the animal species. 
meaning both the animal, uh, both the elephant and the ant possess power. But the power of the elephant, when you compare it to an ant, is far much greater. And each species' power is considered accordingly. So in turn, the variation of the meaning of power occurs here. So the power of, for example, between an ant and a human being cannot be compared. And similarly, the power between the creation and the creator cannot be compared as well. So our goal in this, brothers and sisters, is to clarify that between Allah's attributes and between the names of attributes of some of the creation are similarities. But this is similarity in names of the attributes themselves and the general meaning. So with what we observe and understand of the descriptions of the creation, we can understand some of the meanings of Allah's names and attributes. But when it comes to ascribing and specification, giving each attribute and name its specific meaning, then Allah's attributes are those which befit Him and are unique to Him alone and are complete and perfect and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no partner in this. And the attributes of the creation are described with what befits them, containing weakness, containing deficiencies, and containing shortcomings. So there is no comparison between the attributes of the creation and the Creator except for some of the general meanings and the names of these attributes. So from amongst the ideology of those who have been immersed and engrossed in the intellectual sciences and some of the misguided sects such as the extreme Mu'tazila, such as the Asha'ira or the Jahmiya and some of the extreme Sufis. Okay? They believe that the foundation which precedes everything in affirming and establishing Allah's characteristics is the intellect or our logical proofs. And whatever cannot be established by their intellectual reasoning and what has come in the Qur'an and Sunnah, they consider the Qur'an and Sunnah as contradictory and conflicting their intellect. So they allow their intellects to precede everything. As for the text of the Qur'an and Sunnah, then they either, they either explain it with a false or distorted meaning, or they make tahrif, or ta'til, or tamthil, or ta'wil. Or they deny it altogether. So in reality, they allow their personal views and personal opinions and their intellects to proceed the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who establish the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts and in our souls and in our actions and upon our tongues and in our communities and in our masajid so that we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn more about our magnificent creator. We thank all of you for joining us today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and increase us in beneficial knowledge. Whatever we said which is the truth is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And whatever we said which is mistaken is from myself and the shaitan. And I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now and forever. Jazakallah khair for joining us. Subhanaka lahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.